Chairman Bowles, Chairman Simpson, uh, members of the committee, I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today. Uh, my name is Edward Coyle, and I'm the Executive Director of the Alliance for Retired Americans, a four million member national organization uh, with grassroots chapters in 30 states. Uh, I'd like to spend my time in front of you today talking about Social Security. Retirees are deeply disturbed by talk coming out of the Commission and in the press about cutting Social Security benefits and raising the retirement age. The truth is, Social Security is one of America's great success stories. It has kept generations of seniors out of poverty. It did not, and I repeat, did not, cause these deficits. The fact of the matter is that Social Security currently has a surplus of $2.6 trillion. Social Security is a fiscally conservative, self-sufficient program with a dedicated source of revenue. Of revenue. It is an efficient, solid program with only 1% of funds going to, over, to administrative costs. I respectfully challenge the Commission to find a federal government pr program that runs as efficiently and as effectively as Social Security, and one that is financially solvent, by the way, well into the future. No one dislikes the federal debt more than today's retirees. They don't want it to be the legacy they leave behind to their children and to their grandchildren. And they ask the question, is our federal budget deficit too large? Yes, it is. They also say, is it Social Security's fault? And the answer is no. I know you've just heard from America Speaks, and frankly, in America Speaks reports, a lot of our members participated in their program over the weekend, and we find a lot that we can agree with uh, in what the America Speaks program has uh, suggested. But retirees are greatly disturbed uh, that they are recommending increasing the retirement age to age 69. Not only would this reduce benefits, which, as I said, have nothing to do with the budget deficit, but it would also be devastating to American workers, particularly those workers who work in physically demanding uh, construction and service sector jobs. Americans in their late 50s and in their early 60s are already bearing the brunt of layoffs and benefit cuts from the recession. Raising the retirement age would inflict further hardship among a group of workers who are struggling to keep their job, let alone find another one. Many people face increasing health prob problems in these years. Simply put, Many workers cannot continue in their jobs until they are almost 70 years old. The Alliance for Retired Americans strongly rejects the gloom and doom, sky is falling predictions that Social Security is going bankrupt. Not only is this factually untrue, it is a scare tactic, in my view, to divert attention away from the root causes of the deficit, unwise tax and spending decisions by Washington over the past decade. To further strengthen Social Security's financial structure, the Alliance for Retired Americans supports raising the payroll tax cap currently at $106,800 for the wealthiest Americans. Right now, someone like Bill Gates is paying the same Social Security taxes as a worker who's making $106,000 a year. Experts have said that raising the cap to 90% of all wages would fill one-third of a projected shortfall over the next 75 years in the Social Security Trust Fund. This change would only increase taxes on 6% of all workers, but would further strengthen Social Security benefits for the remaining 94% of workers when they retire. We all know that retirees care a lot about, other than uh, about themselves. They worry about their children and their grandchildren in these difficult times. Will they ever be able to retire? And if so, what will be there for them? At a time of rising cynicism toward government, particularly among young people, it is more important than ever that our nation fully honor the promise of Social Security.